Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In this video, I'm going to talk about process improvement programs that is Six Sigma, Lean Thinking and Theory of Constraints. So we will talk about in this video about what is Six Sigma, what is Lean Thinking as well as also known as Lean Manufacturing or sometimes Lean Production and then Theory of Constraints. And then we also talk about what are the difference between them. But before going to talk about Six Sigma, Lean Thinking and Theory of Constraint, let me start with because all three are used to improve the process. So let me start with by defining the uh, process. So process or you can say the operation is, is basically indicating or you can say referring to the production of goods or providing the services to the customer. But the most important thing over here is that is basically while we are converting the input into the output, either uh, those inputs because inputs are always taking into the in terms of the flow unit perspective. The flow unit perspective means either it could be the raw material or the customer and the output is the raw material is converted into the finished goods or the customers or the patients is uh, getting some services. So what we are saying that we need to transfer the input into the output by using the set of value added and the non value added activities. So why I'm saying the set of value added non value because while we are doing some different operations or different activities on these inputs. So some of the activities are value added. Some of the activities are the non value added activities. So what are the value added activities? Um, activities or you can say those set of activities gains which customer is ready to pay okay uh, so that means on those activities against uh, the customer is going to pay us while the non evaluated activities are the activities in, in which customer is not ready to pay such as uh, waiting time such as uh, in when work in process inventory such as rework such as over processing we are doing some over processing on the product uh, due to that we are uh, basically increasing the cost of the product so customer is not ready to pay on against those activities so we need to transfer the input into the output by using the set of value added activities and we will try to minimize those non value added activities however we would be able to reduce our production cost so that is the main, uh, you can see the target in basically uh, uh, in the process improvement process. So for the process improvement process, we have three programs. One is either you can use Six Sigma or either you can use Lean Thinking or either you can use Theory of Constraints. All three programs, the ultimate target is to satisfy the customer or to improve the processes, but in different ways. Like Six Sigma is basically uh, um, is mainly talking about reducing the variation. How we can identify the defects in the product, and we are trying to uh, eliminate those defects from the process and try to minimize the variation in the process. And however, we would be able to get the better quality product. Okay, or you can say lesser, lesser with the lesser, lesser variation, we are getting the product while in lean thinking we are trying to eliminate the different kind of wastages remember while we are defining the depth process we talk about uh, eliminating the non value added activities so those non value added are actually called as you can see the waste so we are trying to eliminate those non value added or you can say try to eliminate the wastages however we would be able to simplify our processes and uh, we we can increase the speed of the input flow or you can see the flow unit however it can move uh, in the system uh, quickly while the third uh, uh, program is basically the theory of constraint so in a theory of constraint we are trying to managing the constraint okay so what does that mean managing the constraint mean we are trying to identify the weakest link in our entire process what is the weakest link that is basically the bottom link. okay we are trying to identify the weakest process in our entire process and try to focus on that uh, system or you can say that part of the system and try to maximize the throughput or you can say try to maximize the output 
on that particular process. So that is basically the ultimate target of the theory of constraints. So now I am going to discuss these three programs one by one uh, uh, a little briefly. Uh, so what are they? You know, we can define them. Okay, and then what are the major differences? So let me start with by defining uh, the six sigma. Six sigma is basically a data driven methodology. So it is also called as it's a high hanging fruit. So why we are saying it's a high hanging fruit? Because uh, for for six sigma programs, we need high uh, high quality of uh, you can say skills with respect to the data analysis so the ultimate target in six sigma is that is to reduce the process variation or you can say try to decrease the process variability however we would be able to improve our product quality and we are getting more and more profit okay so when uh, we are the thinking about the six sigma definition perspective so you are seeing two uh, different diagrams over here okay so like the first diagram and the second diagram actually uh, when we are talking about the six sigma uh, especially with respect to the quality point of view so we are always considering 1.5 sigma shift theory angle okay so let me start by defining this one okay so usually uh, when we are seeing six sigma in statistical language because statistics is always considering that your process mean is hitting the target value that mean uh, suppose if we are taking the example from the textile sector and uh, and we are producing uh, a pant and the length of the pant is let's say the 40 centimeter okay so that is basically given by the target from the customer so now we are going to produce the pen and we are taking the sample and we are saying on average whether our process is able to produce the 40 centimeter length pen or not. So that means whether our process is hitting the target. So in statistical perspective, we, we are saying that. So in statistical perspective, we are always assuming that our process mean is hitting the target. And then we are saying how much variation uh, is occurring in the process. And because the Six Sigma theory is based on one of the probability distribution that is called as a normal probability distribution. So in a normal probability distribution, we are saying this is always, or you can say the rule of thumb, this is always true. If there is a one, plus minus one Sigma deviation from the mean, okay. So basically, uh, how we are calculating plus minus one plus minus two that is basically calculated through uh, you can say z score that is basically x bar minus mu over uh, sigma over n under root. So this is a formula where we are calculating these these values, right? Uh, so in shorter sense, sometimes we are also called as x minus mu over sigma so right now i'm not talking about what's the difference between these two but you can take one of them like for example this one so this is like we are assuming that here the process mean is hitting the target and how much uh, deviation is occur or you can say how much uh, we are lying away from the mean value uh, so that that is basically indicating the value of z and that is also indicating how much variation is occurring so as you know you can see that as we are assuming that uh, we are hitting the target as the sigma level in, is increasing so more and more uh, percentage of the good uh, quality mean more and more product are lying within the specification limits that was given by the customer okay and the pers uh, this is parts per million number of defective units are reducing but remember that in order to understand the proper uh, six sigma definition, you always think like uh, this is for example, when the sigma is let's say two, okay? And assume that your process mean is basically is three. Again, we are saying the process mean is three, which is hitting the target, okay? Which is hitting the target. Now your sigma level is one. That means we are able to reduce the variation in the process. If you would able to calculate a mu plus minus one sigma 
okay and mu plus minus 2 sigma and so on up to mu plus minus 3 sigma so you can uh, you should calculate the values of that one and see how um, what is the difference when we are use, taking the sigma 2 and when is when uh, we are taking the sigma 1 so let me take this example if we are taking mu is 3 plus minus uh, sigma is 2 so that is plus minus would be 2 so the limit would be minus 1 and then 5 so the lower limit would be 1 and upper limit is 5 okay and if we are taking uh, mu plus minus 2 sigma so that would be equal to 3 plus minus uh, 2 into uh, 4 uh, 2 into 2 that would be 4 so this would be equal to minus 1 and we will getting the uh, that would be equal to uh, you can say this would be 7 okay because 3 plus 4 would be 7 then we have uh, 3 uh, if we are taking the 3 sigma that is mu plus minus 3 sigma so mu is 3 sigma is 2 that is 6 so 3 minus 6 this would be equal to minus 3 uh, so uh, uh, minus 3 and then this would be equal to uh, 12 right because 3 into 3 9 plus uh, 12 okay and so on so this is when we when this uh, sigma is equal to 2 let me take when the sigma is equal to 1 okay mean right now I'm talking about this one. so if I'm calculating uh, mu plus minus 1 sigma this range so I am get I will get uh, one that means this would be equal to two two uh, so that would be equal to four okay over here but would be equal to when this uh, when I am calculating two sigma that would be equal to three plus minus two into one so that is basically one and five okay uh, similarly you can calculate for three sigma for four sigma and so on but uh, we can see that when the standard deviation or you can see when the actual process variation is two sigma uh, is, is equal to two and when the standard deviation we would able to reduce the process variation that is equal to one now you can compare the variation here the, uh, when we are at a sigma level one so the same variation we are getting if we are able to reduce this variation that is equal to one so we are getting the sigma level 2 so that means uh, in order to increase the sigma level so the ultimate target is you are if you should be able to reduce the variation in the process so if you are able to reduce the process variation so your sigma level is automatically start increasing so that is basically we are writing down mu plus minus z sigma so you can say z over here is indicating the sigma level so that means if you want to increase the sigma level, you should be able to reduce this process variation. So that means uh, as long as you are able to reduce the process variation, your sigma level is start increasing. But in quality perspective, whenever uh, we are talking about the six, six sigma, so we are always assuming that our process mean is not hitting that target. So it is deviated from the target either towards the left side or upper side and how much it is deviating we are de uh, we are defining that it is uh, deviating from the target mean 1.5 sigma so that means our process mean is shifted either towards the lower side or the upper side from the target value up to 1.5 sigma so why we are taking 1.5 sigma so practically there is no uh, reason behind it or you can say there is no evidence behind that one but uh, this is basically given by the Machola company and they provided this standard. They said we have studied hundreds of process from the organization. So your process mean is definitely shifting in a long run from the target value either left or right. So they said based on our experience, we find that the process mean can shift left to or right and they, they have given uh, based on the provided standard that the process mean can shift up to 1.5 sigma so that's why whenever we are reporting the sigma level we are always adding 1.5 in that uh, in order to tell that that uh, in a long range 
that our process mean is shifted up to one uh, one point five sigma either right or left. So that's where due to that that one uh, when I am saying the six sigma that mean out of one million we are uh, there is only three point four defects are acceptable. So remember that whenever we are reporting the sigma level, so we have to add one point five shift theory, right? Because that is indicating the long term. Uh, process. I hope this is clear about what is the six sigma. And now we are talking about what is lean. So lean is basically all about reducing or eliminating the waste. Okay, that means as we have defined the process, that is basically talking about eliminating the non-value added activities. So while we are talking about eliminating waste, that means eliminating the non-value added activities. Okay. So through continuously improving the flow of the process, okay, or you can say the flow of the input, or that is flow of the product or the flow of the flow unit, okay, at the pull of the customer, not at the push, okay. So we are not pushing from the previous process to the next process. But we will always flow the product, or you can say produce the product with respect to the requirement of the customer. That's why we are using that pulling with respect to the customer and try to get the perfection it means whatever the customer required or the whatever the customer needs we will try to produce those products um, uh, according to the specification of the customer when and when they need it okay remember that so pull mean when the customer is needed and remember that when we are saying the customer that customer doesn't mean only the external customer that is also mean that in the internal customer so usually uh, when we are implementing the lean uh, so the cycle we are using or you can see the principle we can use that is basically value value stream flow pull and perfection so under these five principles we can implement this uh, program or you can say lean thinking program or lean manufacturing program. Similarly, uh, Six Sigma we can implement with under DMAG. So what is DMAG? So I will talk about later when I when I will compare the difference between these methodologies. So,